<laughs> I'm here now with Michael Carberry, who is, what would you say, ex-cricketer? What would you say, Michael? Retired is probably the, the right way, the Re- right word. Retired, say. okay. Yeah. So, okay, you mentioned the word retirement. Now, you've had a long span history of cricket. Many years, how many years, in fact, would you say? I say in total, if you, from you're looking at about 29 years of involvement in cricket. So, 29 years, you don't even look old enough, Michael. <laughs> yeah, you don't have, to give, this morning, you don't have to give away your age, but you, you seriously, I've seen some of your pictures this morning and you don't look like you've aged a bit, but 29 years, that's a huge history of cricket. Yeah. Are you ready to let go of it, seriously? Um, it was it was a hard decision at the time. I only made it seven or eight months ago, so it's obviously still quite fresh. Um, but I figured, look, you know, with the way things transpired, it wasn't a great it wasn't a great ending. But I figured, look, you know, leave the game with still a, an assemblance of love for it, uh, rather than sticking around too long and becoming bitter towards the game I think that's very important when you know you want to leave the game in a better place than when you found it so so enjoyment is the, the main key so let's go back in time now from when it started when did you kind of think yeah this is the time I, I actually like cricket I love this game because you know it happens to you in your childhood yeah. what, what inspired you to pick up a cricket ball what happened um, well I think I was quite lucky because both my parents love cricket uh, coming from the Caribbean um, so it was always on in the house you know England West Indies test matches were always on the TV um, we have a, a whole library at home full of cricket DV, uh, video well, video tapes back then um, so it was always it was always there that my dad played was a decent club cricketer um, no more than that he'll tell you different but I thought he was just about decent um, and he used to go along every Sunday watch him the guys there at the club that he was he's one of the founders at um, who've become like surrogate dads to me over my life and career um, were always throwing balls at me from very very early so I figured it was always a path I was going to go be involved in at some point um, down, down the road and what was what drew you to like the actual game? Because I know, okay, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not a sports woman. I have played tennis in my time. I was champion at my school. And I think for me, it's the excitement, it's the thrill. In those days, what do you remember actually got you about cricket? What, why did you want to play cricket so much? Um, I think, like most sports, cricket, tennis, football, I think what it gives you... It gives you a very good rounded view of life and, and the world. Um, you know, you make a whole new network of friends, you get to travel, um, see different parts of the country and the world, um, you get to see different cultures, all that kind of stuff. Um, I suppose more internal, it gives you you know good habits for life. You know, you have to be fit. Um, you have to be on. You know, you have to wear the right clothes and the uniform and that kind of stuff. Um, and I think it prepares you well for life. So, um, and for me also, it, it 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 gave me an activity away from just hanging around on the street, really. Um, where at the time in the nineties, growing up as a kid in South London, you know there was a lot of social tension around, um, and I think my parents were very keen to sort of keep me away from that as well. So. Yeah, it's just a, a natural progression. Really. So it looks like it's obviously helped you um, as a child get through your childhood and as an adolescent. And then to the point where obviously it became more serious for you, when did that break actually happen? Do you think the actual ultimate break for you to obviously take it more seriously and make a future out of it? Um, I, well, it sort of came around about my A-levels. Um, so I'd been sort of a very good youth player up until, you know, I was playing under 19s at 16 so, and, and doing very well so I think you know I very quickly became on the radar of Surrey County Cricket Club uh, which was my turned out to be my first professional club and um, mum and dad were very keen for me to pursue education as well um, times were very different back then um, where you either took the cricket contract ran the risk of you know missing out on education or so is it like a music contract do you get offered like some sort of deal or something because obviously with music you get offered like a production deal for so many years you know you have to reach a target though yeah. is it like that 
Yeah, similar. Um, so obviously you're 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 judged on results. So you know if you don't perform well, you you know you don't get another contract. So, so it's there is, it is a certain amount of uncertainty about being a sports person. Certainly in what I do, I've done for 20 years. Yeah, um, it's always about trying to perform and I suppose eventually break into becoming a regular first team player and hopefully go on and play for England. So. Um, there are steps to get in there, but securing that first contract is always is always you know the dream of any young cricket I would imagine um, because but, it comes your part of your life. But did you know at that stage? Okay, was it the goal then? Okay, and were you told that you were going to play for England, or this was the pri- the primary step, and it was kind of like no, this could happen for you if you take this step. What was it like? What were they saying to you at that point? Yeah. Oh, the playing for England was just a fallacy at the time, to be honest. Um, I, I had no thought in my head that you know I would, I would be playing for England at that time. It was a dream like any young boy wanting to make it at cricket. Um, for me, really just getting into that Surrey team because three quarters of the England team were in the Surrey team. So they were obviously inspirations and boyhood heroes of mine. Um, I felt, you know, that that so what the world has sort of really opened up for me at just at that point there. What a magnificent gift, though, for so young in life to get that. I mean, you know, I, I've got a child, eighteen. He's thinking about going to the army, and you never, you know, you always think to yourself, at that age, there's so many things going on in their life and in their mind, and then all of a sudden to get that kind of pressure as well did you find it pressurising at that age because you know you've obviously you've done A-levels that's pressurising enough but to take on that amount of pressure was it a lot for you then was it yeah. did you enjoy the pressure I would say it was yeah it was pressure for sure um, I mean I, I didn't quite complete my A-levels because I was away playing again playing cricket um, for the England under 19 so I turned up for the exam and that's pretty much all I did really. Um, so the pressure really, I suppose, now was coming from a, a small pond to the big sea and trying to make it. Um, you're, you're now in a totally different environment. The professional game is totally different. And I'll be honest, you know, the first two years or so, I felt very out of my depth. Um, you know, times are very different then. It was more about being seen and not heard as a youngster. You know, do as you're told and earn your respect in the dressing room. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you sort of just sort of rolled, rolled with the punches, trying to map your way in, through, through the sort of professional life. So it was, it was, diff- it was very different. I, yeah, I did find it hard. Um, the standard was obviously a lot higher as well. So trying to get used to a different, a faster paced game, it did take some time, but you know I was fortunate that back then again you had a lot of seniority, and and I think because they saw how hard I was prepared to work at it, that they they sort of helped nurture me in those early years, um, lent their experience where they could, um, but they weren't shy of trying to toughen you up at the same point as well. So it was a uh, you you learned the hard way if that if that makes sense. So you've obviously sort of learnt the hard way and been tough for most of the time. It sounds like you're a bit of a tough night. You've taken a lot of pressure. So, so going back to now the later years, be going to professional cricket and enjoying that. You've made lots of friends, I'm sure, within the, the, the cricket world as a whole. Uh, met a lot of interesting people as well. Probably socialised with a lot of people. Are you still staying in contact with a lot of them? Are they still friends? Yeah, I would thought so. I mean, this. Um, I mean, the professional game is because we, we're all pulled apart to different parts of either the globe or domestically. So, you know, you, you obviously try and keep in touch where and when you can. Um, when you're when you're playing, it's obviously it's not always that easy because you're so engrossed in what you're doing, and you know sometimes your mind is taken up with other things. But um, yeah, sure. I mean, my really close mates in the game. Um, we've always managed to either catch up during the game, you know, go out for meals in the evening. Obviously, on the pitch, it's very different, but yeah. Um, yeah in the but you're still having a few drinks here and there with them and enjoying company. Yeah, I mean, that's what the yeah, game's about. Isn't good. It? You know, so you've, good. Got, you've got to enjoy both sides, and I think it's that healthy respect that you know I respected. Obviously, the, the you know the opponents that they've been over the years, and similarly, they respect the opponent that I've been. So. 
So you mentioned about obviously everyone's still doing different things. And of course you've moved on into something else now. You've been doing a lot of different things. And in fact, be from being a sportsman to now being somebody more creative. Tell us a little bit now about what you do, which I think is an amazing gift. You can tell me different, but I think you've been gifted. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing now, Michael. Yeah, so, well, basically now I've become a, a pencil artist um, of sort of the, the hyper-realistic style, so specifying in sort of portraits. Um, yeah, about, sorry, about three years ago, um, sort of bored at home, um, coming back from a sort of injury um, where you have a lot of time in your hands. And I started just sketching as you do and um, hadn't picked up a pencil before probably 15 years before that since I left school 20 years so was that art A level the one that you didn't sit <laughs> tell me yeah, um, yeah unfortunately yeah art A level was one of them yeah 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 does your art A level teacher now know what you do well when I told her I was giving up she had kittens then um, she, she was like what on earth are you doing you're one of my best students da 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 but was... you need to go back to that school though surely now <laughs> and go and see her uh, and show her your work well, my, unfortunately, my school's no longer there. So, um, yeah, it's, um, I believe it's been knocked down. So, uh, yeah. So. You need to track her down yeah. and invite her to one of your exhibitions. Yeah. I, funny enough, I bumped into one of my teachers and I think he's going to come along. So, hopefully, yes. if he's still in contact with that particular art teacher, she'll come along as well. Yeah. Absolutely, because, um, you know, their, their mentors have helped you in your life as, as well, because obviously it's because of them that you're doing what you're doing now, because they've inspired you before. So, let's go back. Let's go back to the art world now that you're in. And um, talk a little bit about what made you pick up that pencil again after so long. Obviously, you kind of moved away a little bit from cricket now. And now we've got uh, an artist world, not a cricket world, not a sports world, but an artist world. Completely different for you? Yeah, very different. Um, it's a lot more passive, which is nice, a lot more relaxing. Um, but, you know, it's still pressure because you know, now you have to, you're a little bit out of your comfort zone. Um, it's a very subjective world. I mean, someone might look at what I do and not mm. see any creativity in it at all. Um, but yeah, it was something I started three years ago, um, coming back from an injury, a um, lot of downtime. And I suppose really just to keep mind, body and soul intact whilst, whilst you're going through rehab. Is, is always a difficult time and and I've always enjoyed learning various things across my life I was you know, a nightclub DJ for 10 years probably yeah oh you kept that one a secret yeah, Michael you know I'll be asking you all yeah, about yeah, that yeah, in a minute yeah, <laughs> yeah I kept that on the d -low. Um so I was a nightclub DJ for 8 to 10 years in London is there anything you don't do I, I just love learning I think <laughs> I think learning builds a soul it you know um, it makes you a more rounded person. It gives you a more rounded view of life, the world, um, rather than just sort of sticking to one particular thing. So, and I, and I, you know, again, I credit sport giving me the opportunity to be able to delve into different things and um, across my time as well. So you picked up that pencil because at the time you were suffering from an injury. You felt it was going to help you as well to get through to get through that, which is great. And now you've created some fantastic pictures. Tell us a little bit about the art and the pictures that you've that you've created. Yeah, so it's a style that I basically became inspired by a UK artist called uh, Kelvin Ak Akifor. Is, it, um, is his name? So he he was a, a student of Middlesex University, and he's dubbed now the best pencil artist in the world. Um, and I've always enjoyed pencil art for some reason, like black and white photography, pencil art. Um, but the, the, the levels of detail that he was able to create just really, really inspired me. I thought, well, wow, you, you can create this with just a pencil and a rubber. Um, it just was mind blowing. So I just set about, you know, on YouTube, looked, you know, found some, some tutorials that were able to, you know, I suppose help you build foundations um, when you're setting out a portrait and drawing someone and I think over time this the levels of accuracy have got better uh, I've got more confident in my method and you know, I'm not necessarily trying to re 
reproduce Kelvin's kind of work. I mean, it'd be lovely, but um, get somewhere near there. But um, and it just sort of grew legs from there. I, I sit in my local coffee shop where I live in Southampton, and people sort of glance over my shoulder to have a bit of a look and. And you know, I've got some commission work out of it um, over time. So, and it's it's just grown legs. So, little did unbeknown to me that you know, three years on, I'd be sat here, you know, with my first show tonight um, at a gallery in London. I mean, it's and that's what we're coming on to now. Your first show tonight. So, this is in London, in South Kensington, yeah. I believe, yeah. and it's going on through the summer. Is that right? For right. a little bit now, then obviously back in August again a bit later. Yeah. So um, it's you demonstrating your work. It's specifically all about your art and about you yeah. as an artist mm-hmm. and a little bit about your history in cricket. And the pictures you've got up, are they for people to buy? Are they just, is it an exhibition for people to purchase or just to exhibit your work? No, it's a full-on exhibition, so um, it's it's all my work. Um, so, yep, people are more than happy to uh, come along and view it, and if they would like to purchase it, great. Um, yeah, but it's it's as well to get me get my name out there as a as a sort of new artist on the block as well. I mean, it was a fantastic opportunity. I mean, better than you know beyond the wildest dream sort of scenario um, which has happened again <laughs> another thing beyond the wildest yeah, yeah, dream yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean I can see a book on the horizon Michael I can see a book about these how your dreams have come true don't you think yeah. well yeah well you know what's this space because um, you, you, you know you cram things in every hour counts you know you look like me do you think you've got space now to write your biography? Because I think there's room there, don't you think, when this is all over? I don't know. I mean, I like to be quite, quite. I'm actually quite, obviously, actually, I'm quite, quite organised with, with things like my time and how I do things, and I was trying to allow for, for things as well. So you know, you know, I'm a financial trader as well. So I look at, look at, you know, try and make money in the markets. Um, so I did my diploma, just after I retired as well. So. Really, that's where I was thinking about heading initially. And what about social life, Michael? Any family? Any girlfriends? No. Any wives? No. Nothing there? No, nothing there. And no. that's why you are so focused in what you do. Yeah. <laughs> Would you make time for a family, though? Would you do it? Um, again, look, you know... Because um, be- bear in mind, I, you know, seriously, you know what it's like. I've told you, I've got four children yeah. and I still run a talent show. As you know, I've got a book uh, being published and we, we're going to come on to that because obviously we're going to link you in with that promotion, which is fantastic. Um, family life. I mean, is there any, has that ever been a chance for you? Did you want that ever? I think, to be honest, I was so driven in what I wanted to do. I mean, yeah, I had relationships along the way and mm-hmm. they didn't work out for various reasons I think again because people need to understand your journey and it's not a hobby it's not a job it's a it's a life ambition and I think it's, it becomes very different it becomes a life ambition and I think to, to be you know I just didn't want to be good or you know I wanted to be great and what I had to you know my fight was different to a lot of people coming up in the game um, I had to break down maybe a lot more barriers than most people to get where I had to get to so you know, I, I couldn't afford a drop off in that focus for me. You know, I had to, I had to zero in, um, and unfortunately, you know, other people didn't didn't get it, and it is what it is. Um, but I have no regrets. That's the but important thing. Perhaps you will meet somebody that's just as driven as you are. Yeah, great. Yeah, you know, because there's a lot of people out there that both have drive, and if they both understand, then that person will understand you, and perhaps you will get that person, Michael. Look, you know, yeah. it, it, it's it's up in the air, isn't it? Um, yeah. you know, it's not a it's not a burning desire to have a family. Um, and at the moment, you're perfectly happy. That's fantastic. Yeah, everything's good, you know. Um, I don't think I actually don't know how you get the time to do everything that you've been doing. Seriously, <laughs> I really it's don't. It's been tough, yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, let, you know, I'm hoping that obviously once we get off, off and running, obviously things will start to settle down and. I will start to have a little bit more time on my hands, at least just to... Do know, some more paint, do some more drawings. Well, there is that as well, <laughs> small matter of, yeah. Um, but, you know, just be able to catch up with people, friends, like I say, family. My brothers live in London, so, you know, they've been patient 20 years watching me up and down, you know, the globe, yeah. globe trotting, competing. So, you know, spending more time with my mum, you know, I'm 
sort of based in London at the moment. Are Do they you... coming to support you at the exhibition? Yeah, your hopefully family? they'll come Good. along, yeah. Some some family, some cousins. Um, yeah, there's a lot of us, so yeah, there's been some family there, some some very close friends, um, people from school, so you know, that have been there on both journeys. So mm. cr the cricket journey plus now the artistic journey. So Fantastic. So yeah, it's been really good. So, Michael Carberry, so finally, just before we go and end this, in, this wonderful interview, I'm just going to announce now that Michael will be promoting and helping to promote Changing Sky, which is going to be uh, published in four or five months. And um, what we're hoping to do is link in a promotion with your artwork. So look out for that, listeners, because soon, Michael Carberry, you'll see a, a very good link with Cancer Research. As Cancer Research, we obviously will be selling... Uh, Changing Sky in 15 of their stores around the country and Michael will be helping with that link as well so so do listen in as well Changing Sky is being wrecked on Brooklyn's radio as well on every Friday evening now at 7.15 so listen out for uh, the actual readings of Changing Sky that's 15 minutes you've worked for you to listen to and later on in this year and Christmas time you'll be able to um, pick up a book of Changing Sky and Michael Carberry will be involved as well within that promotion but you have yet to find out how and we will reveal all later on on Brooklyn's radio now Michael my final question to you is what holds in the future for you now what have you got in mind because I could almost see you as an entrepreneur because you're developing that way I'm a music entrepreneur but you are something completely different because you've got a, a lot of I don't know what's the word a lot of things going on finger in lots of pies and they all seem to be working really well and is it a future for your art now but you say you're trading now possible book perhaps one day what are we seeing in the future for Michael Carberry now yeah, 10 um, years ahead what do you think yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited for the for the the artistic side. Um, I was actually having a conversation with my mum seven, eight months ago uh, when I said to her I was going to retire. And I said, you know, I think this now will be, I'm actually excited about this new phase of my life because I feel this will be my most successful phase. And she, yeah, she raised an eyebrow as well. She said, you know, you played cricket for 17, 18 years. Like, what are you talking about? And I said, no, because my view is, when you're in a sporting bubble, you know life. You know life is you. You do. You do. Uh, you are exposed to a lot more things, a lot more opportunity. You earn more money than the average person, so it allows you to do a lot more things at a younger age. Whereas now that's all sort of gone. And being an entrepreneur yourself, you know how how driven and, and mm. determined you have to be to break down certain barriers as I said you know it's constantly breaking those barriers down for you know not necessarily who me but it's that next generation you know it's trying to create a clearer path for the, the, you know the new kids coming up and, and showing them a different way to what's going on in society at the moment which is you know a bit sad to see at times. And you've mentioned about perhaps linking to some schools as well with your art? Yeah yeah eventually yeah we um, yeah we, you know, we, we look into obviously you know spread out eventually as as we get more and more exposed.